Yo, can you see both my chains? I'm trying to be two chain right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> good, good. The straps on the way? I fucking knew it. You know what's crazy about aesthetic? It's like, yo, I love this bag, but it gets in the way of the swag. <laughs> Look, I got this. <laughs> Make sure you keep this so people know I'm human. <laughs> hey, man. It's Dylan Ponders here. Fucking with PT Dub right now. Tune in to my perspective on this crazy place that we live in. Esplanade, essentially, on Sherborne. Um, and honestly, I lived there for maybe two, two, three years, and then we moved a little closer to um, the central downtown area, I guess closer than that. But honestly, I've, it's pretty crazy asking me like where I grew up, because I've moved 26 times in my life, and they've, it's all been in Toronto like Mississauga or Etobicoke or Spadina, Bathurst, Dufferin. So yeah, I was born on the Esplanade, but yeah, I've, I literally grew up all around Toronto and it's been pretty, a pretty immersive experience. It was, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I, um, I recorded at St. Albans, which is a community center. Uh, actually, yeah, right, right, right along DuPont. And I started recording there because it was a free studio and my best friend Kalik, who's still my best friend to this day, we've been friends like 10 years. It makes me feel so old. But yeah, we, um, he brought me to the studio and I recorded this song called, oh man, I forgot the fuck, Jedi Mind Fuck. I'll never forget the name, cause like what, you know? And I recorded the song and it was over this, uh, this crazy beat. And I remember recording and like recording all this poetry that I've been writing. And I remember realizing that recording music and writing music are two completely, completely different ball games. Like you can write a song with all the crazy double time flows and all the cadences you want, but actually recording it and delivering it with cadence and saying it properly was like a whole new ball game. And I remember when I first recorded, I was like, holy shit. I gotta like master how I say things and when to give my energy. So I remember feeling like when I first recorded that I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> like this is fun, but if I'm gonna be good at this, I gotta put in a lot of hours. And that's what I did. Donkey Kong, um, I liked uh, Sonic more than anything in life. My cousin has Sega Genesis. I feel like an old ass nigga saying Sega Genesis because there were kids born in like the year 2000 or like later than that. And they're like, what's the Sega Genesis? Bitch, it was the best thing that ever happened to my life. Oh man, okay. Well, it's either Family Matters, Fresh Prince, Simpsons, or Boy Meets World, or a mix of all of them. Boom, right there, take it or leave it. <laughs> oh. I know this uh, show revolves around me playing video games, but I'm just gonna roll weed. Well, sonically, lyrically, and musically, I think they're both equal in terms of like quality. But the difference is like No Man's Land was like, I had just fallen out with an old DJ and I was losing a lot of friends from the downtown core who are still doing nothing and being unproductive as I predicted at the time. And I cut off a lot of people and No Man's Land was like, that was like, yo, I'm in my own land. Matrix is kind of a thing, like I'd done some touring and done a couple more shows than I'd done. And I felt like I was at a different level musically and as an artist. And Matrix was more of, like No Man's Land was like, yo, fuck you, I don't need you. Whereas Matrix is like, I bet you wish we were still close. <laughs> kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> yo, can you see both my chains? I'm trying to be two chain right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Good, good. The straps on the way? I fucking knew it. You know what's crazy about aesthetic? It's like, yo, I love this bag, but it gets in the way of the swag. <laughs> Look, I got this. <laughs> Make sure you keep this so people know I'm human. <laughs> okay. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, I still
still like do drugs every here and there. Like, you know, I'll, it'll be a festival my girl wants to go to and I'll do some Molly. Like, I learned that back in the day, I used to do drugs every day because I thought it was a lifestyle. I did them all the time. I was unhealthy and drugs were my escape. And nowadays it's just like my, I don't need to escape. My life is great. I, I, I formulated my own existence. I've, I made, I made my own thing now. So like when it comes to the whole drug shit, it's like, I feel like you have to kind of know yourself, you know, like I'm not afraid to say that. Yeah. I, I'll still drink. I'll still obviously smoke my weed or I'll, I'll do whatever I need to do. But I wake up every day and I record three songs and I go to the gym and I call my mom and I take care of my siblings and I take care of my family um, in, with, with spirituality and with introspect. Like I, I don't let drugs get in the way of my life anymore. Back in the day, drugs were like, yo, I'm high all the time. I'm above everything. Like you feel numb to everything. And that's so easy to do that. It's such a weak thing to do to numb yourself to everything. I got this beat from, um, I can't remember if it, was, if it was Raleigh or Dutch who made the beat, but I got the beat and I'm just like, I don't know why. Like, I think I was just looking at Rihanna's like Instagram page. I'm like, yo, she's so influential, such a bad bitch, so talented. I wish she wrote her own music so I could give her all my respect, but she still has most of it. And I was like, I want to make a song with Rihanna. And like, I kind of laughed at the bar. And I'm like, yo, this sounds kind of hot. Like, let me just keep this going for a minute. And I finished the song and I was like, yeah, so this is, this is going on the album for sure. <laughs> it's kind of like, I made that album uh, while I was homeless and not just doing drugs, but I was kind of on my come up musically. And it was, it was a reflection of how fucking weird my life was at the time. And when I was making all these songs with BVB on The Boy Who Died, I kind of I kind of realized that, you know, like this is this is me become this is like my my not my second coming, but like, yeah, I'm a fucking grown ass man now. I'm I'm so good at what I do and I'm taking care of myself and I'm I'm out here, you know, like I'm a fucking man. And that's kind of when The Boy Who Died concept hit me, you know, like I'm I'm not. I'm not a boy anymore, you know? Um, I learned from all of that shit. Like, I am the boy who died. I'm, he's not there anymore. I'm the man now. Out my everybody uh, was the Weekend's trilogy, man. Well, yo, uh, first album my dad bought for me was Michael Jackson's, um, oh man, I forgot the name of the album, man. I smoke a lot of weed, but it, was, I, it wasn't. It was an album with a song, You Give Me Butterflies. I don't remember the name of it, but my dad bought that for me. But the first album I bought with my own adult money was Abel's album, fucking Trilogy. Well, like Kobe uh, obviously has transcended beyond basketball and has become kind of a figure in culture as an undeniable force, someone who works harder than everyone. And for me, like, whenever I make a banger, <laughs> I play the song and to my niggas I'd be like Kobe like it was always just an expression to um, Describe how elite and amazing what I just did was So when I made that song with BVB and I'm like I ain't trying to be nobody's hero Like that's Kobe wasn't trying to be nobody's hero He was just fucking trying to win And I was like yeah, I'm calling the song Kobe like that's that's it right there, you know I, we're filming this before my single drops next week, but yo, Sauce, this interview will be out probably after it is dropped. How sick is this song? Okay, yeah, let's continue. <laughs> Was a, a painter. Me and my friend colleague used to paint for this company. And the guy who owned the company, like, literally promised us, like, a payday. And we worked for him for like three months and he never paid us. And like people who we painted their houses, <laughs> we'd like show up at their door with like our shirts on and we'd be like, hey, we're at, you know, like Franchise Painters Club. We're going to paint your ceiling <laughs> or whatever. And 
They're like, who are you? <laughs> and then they'd eventually let us in the house. And we'd do a terrible painting job because we had no training. And we... <laughs> and, and then we didn't get paid by our manager because he just disappeared. So that was the weirdest job I've ever had legally. We were like a, like a, we were on like a GG, like the brand was like a painters, young painters, scholars, painters club. But it was really just a sketchy piece of shit, just using kids who wanted money and using our services and promising us a payday and never paying us. And then he moved out of the city and we couldn't find him. It was, it was, it was a, it was a realization for me. Um, Britney Spears and Jennifer Lopez, but mostly Jennifer Lopez. I like my wife, her name Aubrey, she's my love of my life. I'm pretty sure she's aware, like if I see Jennifer Lopez in her presence, it's like just understand that like I'm, I wanna say hi to her. <laughs> <laughs> in this climate that we're living in, I can't really go in, but yeah, Jennifer Lopez is great. That's, that's my answer. <laughs> J-Lo. Uh, yeah, it's pretty hilarious. There's only one and let me flex for a second. It's the number one opera singer in essentially the world. It's Misha. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your last name because there's like 29,000 letters in it. But Misha is uh, a beautiful, established, amazing opera singer. And she is featured on uh, one of my songs on the album. I, I gotta put the controller down because this story is really cool. Because I did an acid a rain album a couple years ago and then I made an acid jazz album and Misha heard the album through a guy named Chris who is her best friend and one of my close affiliates and she's like yo who the fuck is this guy and she's like yo I wanna I wanna invite him to my birthday and Brendan my manager messages me one day he's like yo this opera singer <laughs> wants to bring you to Nova Scotia to her house to perform for her birthday I'm like, yo, I'm just waking up, smoking a blunt, just, you know, living my regular life. And he's like, yeah, yo, this like uh, the number one opera singer like in the world wants you to, to come and perform at her birthday party. And I'm like, well, the answer to that is clearly yes. Like, let's do it. And, you know, went to her house uh, with the band and a bunch of musicians from like Sweden and fucking Africa, like a violinist, fucking interpretive dancers, like her, it was one of the craziest, weirdest experiences of my life, and we all did shrooms together, like 30 odd people, it was crazy, and I traveled back to Toronto, started working on the boy who died, and she messaged me and said, yo, let's do a song together, and I brought her to the studio, and yeah, the rest, the rest is history. You have to understand how many layers that you're fucking throwing at me right now. Okay, so when I'm in the mood for Chinese food, swatow. Don't at me. Don't even look in my direction. Swatow, bitch. When I want fucking Caribbean food, I'm gonna go to fuck, yo, you know what's fucked, man? Rasa pasta has been really fucking my life up with the oxtail. So Rasta Pasta, for sure. I love Sean Leon. I love Jazz Cartier. I respect 88 Glam. I respect all these niggas in the city. But in my opinion, man, like, no one can fuck with me. No one. Like, I, I will talk to any music head in the world. No one can fuck with me in this city. So I feel no competition. I only feel respect and love for my niggas winning. But no one can fuck with me in my, in my lane. No one. But I hope you're fucking with the boy who died. I'm the best rapper alive. You don't have to agree with it. Like, you don't have to agree with the fact that the sun is, like, really hot. But the sun is hot. That's, that's, how, that's how you should view my, what I do. <laughs> but all jokes aside, I'm Dylan Ponders, and thank you for tuning in. God bless. Skip! <laughs> <laughs>